What happens when you pull on something? For example, pull on a rubber band. What happens? You pull on it, you let go, it snaps back. You can continue to do this over and over again. You can do a similar thing with a piece of metal if you're careful. Let's bend the paper clip. Not too far. You can bend it, release it, bend it again, and it always goes back to where it started. These two cases are examples of elastic deformation, deformation that will always go back to where it started. So what's really going on in elastic deformation? When you apply a force and pull, bend, or twist a metal, the force gets transmitted down to the atoms. You are really pulling on the atomic bonds inside the material. Think of an atomic bond as a spring that is holding two atoms together. You pull on the atoms and the spring will resist you. This is what you perceive as the strength of the material. If the spring or bond doesn't break, the bond will snap back and it will return to its original position when you let go. That happens to every atom in the material that is experiencing the force. So what happens if you pull on the material hard enough to break the spring or bond between the atoms? Well, in that case, the material will not go back to its original position, and that is called plastic deformation. We will talk about that next. When I only put a little force on the paper clip, it deflects, and then it will go back to its original position. What if I put more force on it? You can see that I put enough force on the paper clip and it bent. It didn't return to its original position. This is called plastic deformation. What's going on in plastic deformation? What happens is the force pulling on the atomic bonds is large enough to break the bonds and new bonds are formed, creating a new permanent resting position. So where is this point between elastic and plastic deformation? How do we know how much force we can apply before you permanently deform a material? Let's look at an easy case. Imagine that you are pulling straight on a bar with a force F, like in the figure, and the bar has a cross-sectional area of A. We define a quantity called stress that is equal to the force divided by the area. Experiments can be run to determine what stress is needed to plastically deform a material. This stress is called the yield stress, or yield strength, of a material. You can look up this property on the web or in any material science book for many materials. Anything below the yield strength will produ produce elastic deformation, and anything above will produce plastic deformation.